I was kind of thinking, do I want to make this video only about JT Miller getting the third star of the week? But then I opened up Twitter, I opened up Reddit, and I saw some other things that I think are very notable and some things that we should actually talk about. So this is just going to be a long Vancouver Canucks news update video, I guess. And bear with me, my voice is still very, very difficult to push out. Again, just like I said yesterday, I hope I don't have the coronavirus, but I indeed am suffering some nasal vocal inhibiting illness, so hopefully that gets cleared up in a little bit. But the biggest news that we're getting out of today, JT Miller has been named the NHL's third star of the week with three goals, four assists for seven points in four games played. The other two players, first and second stars, it's Dreisaitl with eight points in three games and Stamkos with eight points in four games. So yeah, those guys are really gosh darn good. But JT Miller is over here getting himself the second most points in the league. It actually says here in the little article that he's tied for second most points in the NHL within the last week with his seven points. That's kind of weird because it says right here that Dreisaitl and Stamkos each have eight in the last week, so I'm not really too sure how that works. But hey, NHL, you do what you want to do. JT Miller going over his game log, he's been an absolute beast. Last night against the Carolina Hurricanes, one assist. Two nights ago against the Islanders, two points. Against the Sharks, two points. Against the Blues, two points. Against the Sharks and the Coyotes, one point each. Then going back against Minnesota and Buffalo, two points each. Obviously, that's out of the range of within the last week. But seriously, JT Miller is on such a tear and he's on such a point streak. It's crazy that he's at 53 points in 53 games played. Seriously, when we traded for JT Miller, who would have expected him to be a point per game back then? And hey, speaking about that trade, I made a video a few days ago where I was talking super positively about JT Miller, and I got one of these comments that said, Lego, stop. You can't talk about how good he is because you bashed the trade when it first happened. Um, yeah, no. I'm kind of offended by that, honestly. And I'm not offended because that's actually what happened. I'm offended because that's wrong. If you look back at the video that I made back when JT Miller was traded for, I was one of the only people who was on board with it. I was one of the only people who saw, hey, we gave up a first, that's a little much, but hey, we got ourselves a great winger. I said that all the way back in June, that I was a fan of the trade, and that I loved it that they brought this guy in. Did I think he was going to be as good as he is now? Absolutely not. But was I satisfied, happy, and overall accepting of the trade? Oh, hell yes, I was. So anybody who's out there listening to this right now, yeah, no, I didn't hate the JT Miller trade. In fact, I made two videos about it, one about the trade itself and one addressing the hate, where I talked about how we all need to calm down and stop hating on it. And even though a first is a lot, JT Miller brings a lot back. So yeah, I was a fan of the trade and it's paying off. We have a point per game player who is so good. He plays such a consistent game. And it's so weird thinking about how he's only 26 and he has like three years left on his contract. It's absolutely crazy how good JT Miller has been, how consistent he's been, and how you could honestly make an argument that he is the MVP of this team, along with Quinn, along with Petey, and along with Markstrom. This is actually the first time since 2014-15 where the Vancouver Canucks have had two separate players named one of the NHL's three stars of the week in that year. In 2014-15, we had Yannick Hansen named as the NHL's first star in the week of November 23rd, and we had Henrik Sedin named as the second star of the week on February 22nd's week. Going over into the next year, 2015-16, we had Daniel Sedin on November 22nd's week as the second star, and that was it. In 2016-17, we didn't have a single player make the three stars of the week. 
In 2017-18, we had Besser as the first star in January 28th week. Then, last year in 2018-19, we had Elias Pedersen getting up there twice. So, that's not really surprising. And then this year, we had Elias Pedersen as the first star in November 3rd's week, and we have JT Miller as the third star this week. So, it's the first time in five years that we're having two separate players make this list. Speaking about the other guy who's made that list, Elias Pedersen, hey, with his two goals yesterday against the Carolina Hurricanes, Elias Pedersen has surpassed Nico Hischier as the top goal scorer in the 2017 NHL Entry Draft class. Nico Hischier has 50 goals in 197 games, Elias Pedersen has 51 goals in 124 games. Next on that list, you have Nolan Patrick, you have Philip Cheadle, you have Miro Heiskanen, Robert Thomas, Middlestad, Nate, Josh, Makar, Suzuki. You go down the list, you see some more names that you recognize. But Pedersen has the most goals out of this draft class in such a smaller amount of games played. He doesn't have the most points. Nico Hischier currently has 10 more points than Pedersen does, but Pedersen does have a much better points per game than Hischier does. So... I think we're just painting the narrative a little bit more. Pedersen is indeed the best player out of this draft class. If you do a redraft, it's probably Pedersen, Makar, Heiskinen, Hishir, and then you could probably toss it up between, I don't know, a Robert Thomas or a Nick Suzuki or a Nate Josh or whatever. But Pedersen has jumped out to the early lead and he is looking to be the best player out of this draft. Kale Makar might have something to say about that a few years down the line, but for now, it's Pedersen. Imagine if the New Jersey Devils drafted Elias instead of Nico Hishir. That would have been crazy. Obviously, nobody would have expected it because people thought Pedersen would have been like a top 15 pick at best, but hindsight is 2020, isn't it? Now on to our final piece of Vancouver Canucks related news. Vasily Podkolzin is on an absolute tear. He's got five points in his last six games, trumping his production of zero points in like, what, 17, 18, 19 games or whatever? Pod Colson is out here getting a whole bunch of points. Finally, he is finally getting points because he's finally playing games. Five points in six games is enough for his entire KHL career's worth of production. And he's been given power play one time, which is amazing to see. He's been getting 12, 11, 13 minutes of ice time a night now, which is awesome to see. And it's crazy because he's playing for SKA St. Petersburg, a team that everybody kind of knows is really hard to crack if you're only 18, 19, or even 20 years old. They love playing their older guys. So for Vasily Podkolzin to come over here as an 18-year-old and prove himself to be as trustworthy amongst the coaching staff as those older guys, it's a great sight to see. Podkolzin is playing his game, he's going out there, he's getting those shots, he's getting those opportunities, and he's finally potting in the points. He's got himself at the moment two goals and three assists. We covered his two goals previously. They came in back-to-back -back games, but... Now he's on the score sheet in the assist column, getting involved in the play, which is absolutely awesome to see. It was a matter of time, wasn't it? Just a matter of time before we saw Pod Colson really blossom. And sure, 23 games played, 5 points doesn't sound amazing, but if you take out 17 games where he didn't get a point, you're looking at 5 points in 6 games. That is amazing. So... I'm just kind of looking forward as to what's going to happen next year when Vasily Podkolzin comes over and he's finishing up his KHL contract. What's going to happen then? How good is he going to be then? When the coaching staff already knows that he can tango at 12, 13 minutes a night. Are they going to give him more? Are they going to allow him to play his game for the entirety of the season? Because I'll tell you what, if he's only at five points in six games now, after like half a year of just rotting away with only two, three minutes of ice time per game, then I can't imagine what a 19-year-old Pod Colson would be able to do in the KHL, given all the minutes, given all the ice time, given all the opportunities. Everything is looking great, isn't it? 
And with that, we conclude our Canucks update. Miller is the third star of the week. Pedersen has passed his year, and Vasily Podkolzin is lighting it up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Social life for us, and bye.